one. Hi everyone, welcome to Beekeeping While Black. I am Karen, um, it is spelled with a Y just in case you're interested. And so I am here to talk about why I started this channel. And simply put, I really wanted community as I've been going through this process as a new beekeeper. And there were things that I started to go through that I realized are not, um, I don't think they're common for people who are not black, especially people who are not at least a person of color in the US. And so therefore I decided to start this channel to be able to hopefully create community, to be able to be a resource to um, new and curious um, beekeepers and just to have more representation. Um, so join me as I talk about my first experience and story about what makes beekeeping while black so different. video but I just wanted to now go into the story as to why um, I have had a beekeeping while black experience this is the first experience actually that made me realize that race is not separate from this experience um, and really frankly what in life isn't separate um, when it comes to race that isn't you know somehow influenced by race and so what I want to talk about is the experience that I had um, back in January when I was taking the class um, for beekeeping in the DC area um, it is a part of a major organization that is um, a, an association for beekeeping in DC and I'm still very much a part of it and so I don't want to speak ill of that group because I am a member and it has been a very welcoming community so far. However, I do want to talk about um, my experience. And so part of it is I started taking a class in January. And one of the beautiful things about this association is that they will help you um, figure out if you cannot keep bees on your property. Someone like me who lives in a condo, I can't keep bees on my property. So therefore they are willing to help you um, get a location for your hive. And that could be in a public space or it could be on a private property. There's some people who actually want to host um, a hive on their property, be it a private property, it may be a hotel, it may be a church, like it could be really any type of location. It's just a private, you know, property that wants to have someone or give someone the space to be able to have a hive. And so for me, I was very excited about the idea of like, I don't have a place to put a hive, however, I was excited about being able to have a hive um, place somewhere so that property or lack of access to land would not be a barrier for me. And so I went through the process of taking the class and then as they told us to start thinking about where we were going to get ready in the spring um, to have that, I started looking up locations but I remember there was just this inkling in me and this wrestling of where do I put my hive? Um, that is something that was very much, it was kind of an undertone as I kind of struggled with, well, do I want to be in a park? Do I want to be in a private place? Um, do I want to get matched? Like what, what do I do? Do I even want a hive because of the fear that I had that was kind of underscored that I really wasn't necessarily naming. And then it was one of those things where I was kind of nervous being in a white space to name. Um, the fact that I was just nervous and so one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, with my fear was just the thought of what does it mean to be in a public space as a black person you have to be conscious about where you take up space what does that mean for your safety your surroundings um, how could there be encounters with cops and even as a beekeeper that's something that I have to be conscious of we've seen in the news where you have the um, in pop culture it started off with the Beckys um, and the Sue's and for the last what maybe two years or so it's been Karen not happy with that um if you've seen my personal video that you know that I'm very much over that name being used um you know my name is Karen but before this isn't a new phenomenon this is something that was the Miss Anne um we there is a long history in this country of 
black people being accused of things that we did not do um and just our mere presence of existing and just minding our own business is still a threat for some reason and can lead to the cops being called and just given the history in this country anytime you have an encounter with the cops could be unfortunately a fear of that being your last encounter with anyone and so for me I really was paranoid about where do I place it and where was the dangers or the the negatives or deltas and the positives to being in these different locations and so one of the things that I was very much paranoid about is what happens if I'm in a public park um, when you're in a public park that means you are potentially more Seen, it's more of a higher chance that I could be around frankly more white people um, and it's not that I have some type of fear of white people but just um, I don't want to expose myself unnecessarily or put myself in a position where I have to be paranoid about how I or be on guard or alert about what I'm doing how am I presenting am I being seen as threatening even in a bee suit um and even then some may say like oh well you were in a bee suit so you should be fine but you really just cannot count on that as being a safeguard when it comes to those things and then the other option that I had was to put it on a private property and knowing that there was a good chance that those who would be accepting people on their property were more likely to be white that also became a paranoia for me because what does it mean for me as a black woman to then go and walk um into someone's backyard and people know like mm -mm, she don't live here and so to go through that experience was something that I very much had to be conscious of like either way it felt like regardless of if I go into a public park for my site if I put my hive on a private property, I still run the risk of, of an encounter that would just be unpleasant and just not what it was, you know, what I would want it to be. And so it really became a negative, negative type of situation. I was already paranoid about bee stings and different things like that. And then there's the added layer of race and what does that mean to take up space in this um, area. And so yeah that's pretty much where my paranoia came from and so that was something that I know as a black woman that other people do not have to um, worry about and so as a black woman um, I have to worry about taking up space or I shouldn't even say as a black woman but just any black person has to worry about what does it mean to take up space what does it mean to take up space um, in ways that a white person may not be happy about and so for me that is the first experience of when I realized I need black community I would like to have black people consult me all right y'all so my phone is pretty much out of storage so I'm gonna have to keep recording now on my laptop um so you know here we go um and so one of the things that I experienced when it came to my site was that I ended up getting um, matched with someone who was really eager to have bees on his site and the place um, happened to be very close to my neighborhood and so or actually in my neighborhood and so I decided to then go with that um, house because it was convenient and you know I just I felt like I was kind of damned if I do damned if I don't if I go into private or private private or um, public property. And so I decided to do that. And so naturally, um, you know, the couple decided that if they, they wanted to meet me before I put my hive there, because after all, completely fair, you don't want some creepy person coming onto your property and different things like that. And so therefore, I went to go meet them. Um, and so I met the husband first. Um, and he is a white man, his wife is black, um, but I met him first. And he was very gracious, such a nice person. And when I met him, he was very conscious to make sure that I met his wife, um, as I said, a black woman. And so I got to meet them. They're a really great couple. Um, and so I ended up asking him before I left um, with my mentor um, about 
could he, you know, maybe write something? Just talking about my my um, paranoia, rightfully so, but paranoia about what that experience would be like for me as a black woman having to go into their property. And so um, he understood. He was like, that was kind of the reason why he introduced his wife to me um, was to make sure that, you know, seeing that I was black to make sure that it was, you know, I could see that it was a a welcoming environment also to see that there's other black people who are also on the property and so for me on a regular basis at least um and so um for me I ended up that did give me some more comfort about being on the site and then also one of the things that I asked him was was there something that he could put into writing that would then help me to be able to actually um you know have something in writing that says I'm allowed to be on this property, especially if they're not there at the time. Um, it's something that they ended up doing, um, and I can show the card um, in a moment, but it's something that they did for me. I'm not completely sure that it would even make a difference, frankly, if something were to ever happen and I had the if I ever have an encounter like how I, you know, I'm paranoid about. Um, however, it's something that just gives me a little bit more of a peace of mind. Um, but I do have a little card that they made for me that actually has their signatures. I will get rid of anything that's identifying information um, out of respect for their privacy. But I do want to show the card just to show um, the extra effort that I felt like I needed as protection in order to be present in this um, place. Okay, so here is my card. Um, as you can see, it has my name. See, I told you Karen with a Y. Um, and it says Karen Bigelow is guest beekeeper and has permission to be on our property. Um, and then here I use wasabi tape to um, take away identifying information for them. And it says property owners and so of course you're seeing this in reverse image but this is the card that I carry with me at all times in my wallet um, again like I said before it probably won't mean much of anything um, if I were to have an encounter but at least give me some sense of security um, and so yeah that is my experience of beekeeping while black so thank you so much for watching this video. This is a taste of what I mean when I say beekeeping while black. I want to talk about the experiences that I and others have had as black beekeepers. What does that mean for us? How are How is our experience different? How can we be in community with each other? And also just to educate people about bees and their importance, um, especially when it comes to biodiversity, food security, all those, you know, super important things things in this time. And so thank you so much for watching. I hope you continue to watch with me. Hopefully I won't have this issue with my phone in the future, but um, thank you so much for staying tuned and watching the whole video. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and we'll keep watching. Please like and subscribe um, and come back for more stories um, about what my experience has been and also join me as I have other people come and talk about their experiences because as you all probably know, being black is not a monolithic experience and so therefore just because I experienced something as a black beekeeper does not mean that that's everyone else's experience and there's also different things such as the experience of those who are in rural areas or different cities. Some cities are more bee friendly than others and so everyone has a different experience and a different story and so I hope you just join me as I go through this process of exploring what that looks like for so many other people. Um, thanks so much for watching and I will see you at the next video. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating. I'm sweating like Whitney Houston on stage or like a pastor in the middle of a sermon. This is ridiculous. Okay, um, bye. <laughs>